Well, I think we're, we're going to begin now. First, thank you for those of you here this morning, staying on for this afternoon. Uh, my name is Greg Coleman. I'm the uh, co-founder of Petromall, and uh, several of my co-founder colleagues are here. Uh, Brian Smart, for, uh, now Global College Malta, is here, and uh, uh, Michael Sloan is here. And uh, so today is our formal launch of Petromall. And uh, to kick things off, what we're hoping to do is have a uh, lively discussion about how we in our industry manage risk. We heard some of the discussion this morning about whether we do or don't manage risk. I sort of got the impression we don't manage it, actually, which is something I'd like to see changed. Um, I've had a, too many years of a career in big companies, small companies, and uh, being an engineer, I always believe that there must be some analysis that you can do to make your point and persuade someone to do things that make some sense. What I see happening in the industry, and one of the reasons I believe Petromol is an important addition to what we do in our industry, is that I believe there's a sad lack of science and engineering being brought to bear on the decisions we make. Whether it's the science of people, or it's the science of rocks, or the engineering of steel, uh, deep water developments, all of these things are definitely in need of the best science and engineering that we can bring to bear on it. And we're fortunate in Europe and in our industry that we do have access to some of the very best people. And you know, I believe that that's what uh, we need to do, and we heard it this morning, bringing capability which exists to the people who are now in the decision-making seats, the 30 to 40-year-olds who are being asked to manage projects Deep water projects uh, is the kind of thing that really, uh, I suppose, inspires me on some hand, but also uh, terrifies me on the other hand, that uh, we're going to have uh, more Macondos and things like that, which you know definitely will not do our industry any good. And someday someone's going to say, we don't need it anymore. Don't know when that'll happen. What we're planning to do this afternoon is I'm going to say a few words about uh, Petromol. I'm going to introduce Jim Bucky and say a few more words about him, and then we're going to have three other panelists join Jim on a panel discussion after they say one or two things about why they're here and what they're bringing to the subject. And then we'll have uh, hopefully a debate as opposed to a lecture about what we need to do. And then I hope all of you will sign up to Petromol and uh, we can start to uh, move the conversation forward. Uh, a few little statistics from Willis Insurance Group, which is one of the major insurers in our industry. Um, according to their uh, collection of information, there's about $2 billion, 2 to $3 billion of uh, premium income that they bring in to the industry as far as insurance. And you can see what's happened here. They have uh, expended in 2011 $3.1 billion paying out uh, claims on those incidents that were greater than $100 million. This is the companies that actually insure things. Most of the major companies self-insure in what they call captive insurance and others. So the BP claim for whatever they lost, $40 billion, came nowhere near the insurance industry. I think they capped out the loss at $100 million, and that's the kind of insurance they would have had. And 2011 was a good year. Uh, there was one incident in the North Sea when the Griffin FPSO broke loose from its chains that cost the insurance company a billion dollars in claim. Those are the kind of things that are easily preventable because everybody knows there's big waves in the North Sea and these chains get stretched and the weather changes, but this isn't something that they factored in. And there's lots of science now that can be applied to that kind of thing. Another interesting statistic is blowouts. They go on all the time. They're thought by the newspapers to be relatively rare. <coughs> There's several going on right now, in fact. In fact, I remember, I'm, I think it's still going on. There's one in Indonesia that's a mud flow that's still flowing, that's covered up villages because the well's out of control and they don't know how to plug it. And the insurance people are saying, well, you know, we don't have anything to do with that one. So in my view, there's a lot of surprises out there. They look like alligators. They're very innocent until you get near them and then they bite your arm or leg off. And you never quite know when they're hungry. And I think this is the thing that we need to think about. How do we manage these risks that are, we know they're coming, but we don't tend to look at all of the uncertainties around what we're doing and the decisions we're making to be able to <coughs> anticipate and manage through them if they are going to happen. Uh, what is Petromol? 
very briefly, and you'll, there's a more extensive slide presentation out in the library there, but it's really a social platform similar to LinkedIn, except you have to be a member. It's private so that the whole world isn't going to be watching what you're talking about. There are communities in Petromall that allow access f with experts, whether it's a uh, subsurface expert in reservoir uncertainty or a process safety uh, expert with a person who actually has a challenge that they need to address immediately and they use the internet platform to be able to get connected and, and uh, move to a conclusion so that that person, whoever it is that's making the decisions, for example, my son is now in Paraguay managing a drilling operation in central Paraguay never managed one before in his life, so he better get some help. And um, if he calls me, well, we could have a bit of a problem because all I've ever done are blowouts. But, uh, you know, we need to uh, move on so that people like he can uh, get access to expertise. This is what they look like. In fact, we've been running a discussion on security because, as many of you know, in uh, North Africa and the Middle East, security is a big issue. And if our people won't work there, if they won't get in a helicopter to go offshore, or if they won't go to a, a gas plant in Inaminas, these plants don't last very long because the kind of people you need to run them are very sophisticated and there's lots of jobs and work elsewhere. So we want to look at how you manage security risk, make sure you get the best people on it. And so this is one example which we've been working on in Tunisia, which is obviously directly opposite the Inaminas gas plant where several people were killed by terrorists and the plant's been shut down for quite some time and cost not only money but uh, uncertainty and, and fear in many cases. These are the kind of expertise we have available within Petromol. Uh, a lot of these people are, uh, have been or are affiliated with universities, such as Harriet Watt. We have an increasing compliment coming from Robert Gordon University, uh, Cambridge University, and so on. Uh, we also have people who've been in the industry for a long time and bring their own credentials, people I've known for, for some time. Deb Gruby, for example, is on the uh, Nassau Safety Council. Uh, Tony Ling, who's uh, been in British intelligence for a number of years, brings a whole cadre of people that can help manage those kind of issues. Risk in our industry covers a broad spectrum. It's not just technical, it's legal risk, it's hedging risk, commercial risk, community risk. All of these things need to be integrated so that we understand the full range of uncertainty that we're facing. The kind of uh, expertise that we can manage, corporate governance, you heard from Raj, and he works with uh, investors who are trying to uh, understand what the boards of our various companies can do and can't do, uh, all the way down into the very detailed technical uh, issues of reservoir prediction and performance. Uh, you'll hear today from uh, Raj again, will be on the panel along with Mike Vernon, who will talk about company culture, and he'll say a few words about himself in a few minutes and what he's working on and uh, Brian Hepp, who is more in the world of operations and who's uh, probably lived and seen more operational issues than most of us would in uh, the next year. So uh, Petromol is a very simple thing. You can follow us on, Petro, uh, on Twitter. You, we have an online site which you can sign up to. Uh, eventually, we hope people will pay to be members of Petromol and get access to expertise. We're on Facebook, and we have a LinkedIn site none of which I understand. This is all the 30-year-old generation or younger, so we have uh, younger people helping us with um, making some of this uh, practical. So with that, 